Hi, good afternoon. It's Kate here. Just coming to you really, really quickly to chat to you a little bit this afternoon about sleep and fatigue and particularly this time of the year. So this is really timely for me. Um, um, I'm noticing myself, I'm feeling really sleep deprived this week, had a particularly big week and I figure it's not just me. This time of year um, is particularly hectic, especially getting used to additional um, activities, social, sports back on, um, all kinds of things. So yeah, it's um, getting used to that, just coming out of all our restrictions that we've had, particularly in Victoria, Australia. We've had a lot less than we would normally be used to. And this time of year, it's the, it's the silly season starting, it's the 10th of December, and we've got school concerts, school transitions. Um, this week alone, we had something on, I think, every night of the week. And I've got three kids, so we had multiple things on every night of the week. Um, and yeah, myself as well. I had a netball game that went till 10 o'clock at night last night. So noticing myself that I have not been getting as much sleep as normal. So wanted to talk to you a little bit about that impact on sleep fatigue and what happens to not only our behavior and our ability to cope and our ability to manage our emotions, um, but our ability for our kids who are experiencing exactly the same thing, if not more. They've had fun days, they're having celebrations, they're having, um, you know, gift giving times with their classmates. Um, I've got um, a daughter who's graduating into primary school, so they've had extra things. Um, so all kinds of those extra things take up extra energy. And um, even just getting back into sports and things like that, of course, takes up extra energy. So, yeah, I don't know how bedtimes and sleep are in your family normally, but I know that in our family, um, you know, bedtimes and keeping a bedtime routine, I'm a bit of a stickler for, that's for sure. I try to do that. And, you know, weeks like this and times like this, um, you can really feel it slipping. You can just feel like there's late night after late night and um, just being out at things. And even like with, um, we're in Australia here and, um, um, daylight saving, it's light until nine o'clock at night anyway. So you still kind of get that sensation where it's actually not that late and it actually it really is. Um, and then, you know, kids dragging themselves up and ready to go for another day and just noticing what happens with emotions, not ha what happens with that routine can be really, really challenging. So just thinking about um, sleep routines and how important that is and how um, to manage and protect um, normalcy and just going slow when there's so much intensity at the moment. There's so many um, commitments that might be coming your way or requests or invitations and things, and which is great. And if you're someone who loves that stuff, then you want to be able to do it. Um, but it does take um, a toll and it takes up our energy. And just thinking about, you know, how we can try to stick to a little bit of a routine particularly as the school holidays are, are coming upon us. I know, you know, one of my daughters has already finished, so she's going to be getting into a different kind of routine, probably later nights, those sorts of things. But I know how important getting enough sleep is and how important um, sticking to some of that routine, even if it's in the holidays and even if it's the weekend, have been for our household. Um, and I know how um, our own bodies work in terms of sleep and circadian rhythms is they like routine. And when we're developing good sleep, um, it's sort of important to try and stick to those cues and stick to those um, predictable routines as much as possible. Now, this has other challenges in terms of, like I said, all the extra stuff that's been thrown on top that you don't necessarily want to miss out of. Some families do and that's okay as well. Um, but certainly just thinking about, you know, will you develop a routine over your school holidays around bedtimes? Because I know that come, you know, end of January when school goes back again, that can be a really hard transition if we haven't had some kind of um, routine around um, sleep. We get that kind of really fatigued um, experience happening when kids return there. So just just thinking about protecting yourselves now and looking after your fatigue if you're feeling it already before we've even um, had Christmas and New Year and school holidays, but just thinking about, you know, what do you want to spend your energy on? And how can you help your kids protect their energy as well? Kids aren't very good at doing that. They kind of often want to go, yeah, yes, I'll do this and yes, I'll do that. And they just keep on going and keep on going, keep on going. 
And what you might notice as a parent or a carer or a teacher or professional is they get more irritable, emotions get more heightened, um, and they find it very, very difficult to regulate those big emotions. So I would really encourage you to be, be thinking about that. How can we can protect ourselves and how can we um, create a little bit of a buffer for our kids as well and, and feeling like it's okay to say no to some things if you can see that tiredness happening. Um, yeah, so just thinking, you know, we don't have to have something on every single night. We can say no to things um, and stick to maybe roughly the same kind of bedtimes even when it comes to Friday nights, Saturday nights and things like that. And even if we're moving into school holidays and school might have finished, don't have to let the, um, the the school kind of bedtime, if you've got a school kind of bedtime, don't have to let that go completely. I know that there'll be pressure to, kids want to get rid of that and want to stay up late and do all those cool things. But just thinking about um, what maybe a new routine might look like. Maybe it'll be back, you know, slightly if they can have a bit more of a sleep in, although most families I talk to, and I know my kids, they don't sleep in on the weekends. They're up earlier, usually. Um, so I don't know whether that's for, you, for for your family or not. But, but you know, kids will just wake. Like they wake with the light or that kind of thing. So um, sometimes having later bedtimes just gradually just depletes their sleep. And what that then does is puts lots of pressure on their brains and their bodies in terms of just managing day-to-day -day demands. And um, that's okay if, if there's not too many demands being made on you. And like I said, sometimes the school holidays, you know, you can um, reduce those demands or space out the demands if you, if you can or if you're going on holiday and you want to just take it really easy. But, you know, if there is still a lot on, then thinking about the impact that that might have on behaviour um, in terms of definitely um, anxiety, but it's certainly um, more heightened emotions and maybe anger and irritability and tears and things like that. So, yeah, just, just thinking about the importance of sleep and fatigue, um, thinking that, you know, sleep is, is often a, a challenging issue for lots of families anyway. Getting to sleep, of course, when we've got lots on might actually wind up all those, uh, the thinking that happens um, in the evening sometimes for kids when we're trying to kind of wind down, but it's been such a busy day and, and there hasn't been the same natural wind down routine because after school and after work has been so busy, it can be really hard to kind of find that quiet space in their mind to um, get into relaxation, which is important part of then falling off to sleep. So thinking about how you can find those pockets of quietness, find those pockets of stillness um, so they can, yes, have all the fun and all the celebrations and things that are happening, but still be able to stick with that routine, find some quiet moments so that you can get through these busy, busy festive time that we've got coming up and, you know, the holidays and visiting family and things like that without having um, more stress brought on, I suppose, by those big emotions and, and big emotions for our kids, which means harder emotions and big emotions for adults and vice versa. When adults are tired, when adults aren't feeling like they're um, coping well with all these extra demands, Christmas shopping, um, family coming, getting the house ready, all that sort of stuff, then that can make family life kind of tricky as well. So just um, have a think about where things are for you. I know for myself, um, an early night is needed. I'll be up um, super early tomorrow morning because I um, have, I'm doing our seven-day blueprint to parenting and understanding your anxious child, and we're doing 6 a.m. starts. Um, we are having Sunday off, which is cool, but it does mean get to bed earlier and start the day earlier. Um, so that's what I will be doing to look after myself is, is making sure I have an early night tonight to recuperate from what has been a really super busy week. So I'm hoping you're taking some quiet time tonight if you can, or if you're um, doing some celebrations and doing some fun things tonight, then having some moments tomorrow where you can kind of unwind and just reflect on, yeah, our routines and how we're managing our sleep and our fatigue at this time of the year. So thank you for being watching with me live and I will talk to you again very soon. Take care.